take à la Combien je pense de la Et que de celle vous laissez Un vieux ticket de quai Et je reste là Combien il faut de quai Des au revoir you're very welcome to Diplomatic License right here on City TV. My name is Apioko. Maybe I'll sing the song fully at some point. It's a song that I learned when I was in class six, a French song um, about a lover who had to leave his lover. Okay, but here, I mean, a lot of you may recognize the space to some extent that's behind me. That's if you're familiar with some of the interesting cultural spaces that exist in Accra. But I'll tell you where I am. I'm here at the Alliance Francaise in Accra. And yes, I said Alliance Francaise, small French lesson. Alliance is feminine. And so Francaise and not Francais. There must be an E at the end, okay? You, you come here and learn it. <laughs> but I'm here and I'm here for one reason. I get to speak to Her Excellency Anne Sophie Ave. She is, of course, the ambassador of France to Ghana. Outgoing, albeit, but very much still the ambassador. And it's a, a pleasure to speak to her today. Um, we are here at Alliance Francaise because it's not just a cultural space, it also very much represents the state of France and all the wonderful things that the French government, the French embassy have been doing here in Ghana. And so for somebody like Her Excellency Ave, who is known on the cultural scene of Ghana, she's made a name for herself in the way she's really come in here and done diplomacy, people to people diplomacy. She's changed the game really. I felt that coming here is a huge statement on her high office meeting everything else that Ghana and France have to offer together. So once again, my name is Apioko. Welcome to Diplomatic License. We're going to meet her ambassador shortly, and we're going to have a fabulous conversation. I can guarantee you that. We also have some special activities she doesn't know about them, but I'm sure by the end of the, the episode, she'll be happy and we'll give her a, a wonderful send-off back to France. Welcome. Si bon de partir n'importe où, bras dessus, bras dessous, en chantant des chansons. C'est si bon de se dire des mots doux, des petits rien de tout, mais qui en disent long. Welcome back. You're still watching Diplomatic License right here on City TV. My name is Apioko. Now, if you're just joining us, I did mention earlier that we're here at Alliance Francaise in Accra. Yes, Alliance Francaise and not Francais. A little French lesson there for you. And it's time to get into a conversation with Her Excellency Anne Sophie Ave. She is the ambassador of France to Ghana. Outgoing, albeit, but she's still the ambassador until she leaves. Look, this woman, she came into Ghana, she won our hearts, she took the, the country by storm, really. And she really put a new spin on what diplomacy is. And I'm very curious, as I'm sure you are, to find out from her. You know, so she tells us, you know, how, how it is she, she traversed this terrain for the past four years and what made her do it differently. So, Your Excellency, you're very welcome. Thank you. You know, I'm sort of having quaking me. in my boots because I know you're an ace presenter yourself. <laughs> well, I'm not. I, I, was, I was pushed into doing this uh, because it was about talking about France and what France was doing in Ghana. Therefore, Bolloray, the co-producer, um, when we were looking for a TV presenter, uh, we could have thought of you because obviously your French is top notch. Merci beaucoup. Um, uh, I said, oh, let's look at someone who is French speaking, Ghanaian. And uh, he said, no, you'll do it. And actually he was right because talking about France and France in Ghana was basically what an ambassador's job okay. is about. So uh, I don't know if I was a TV presenter, but I was an ambassador <laughs> talking about what we were doing. Well, it worked. It worked. As many other unconventional things, as someone would put it, um, you did, did work. So let's just talk about you from the beginning. I mean, I've read about you, but I'm going to let you tell us your story. 
obviously you're from France, but which yeah. part of France were you born in? Where were you raised? What was it like growing up? Um, actually, I, I was born in Fontainebleau, which is where François I, uh, the, um, the king uh, in, in 15th century, has built this beautiful castle, a castle where Napoleon said goodbye to the troops. So, and it's a very beautiful castle. I'm sure you've seen pictures of it. Yes. Uh, it's close to Paris, like an hour from Paris. But I didn't, never lived there because we moved when I was like two and a half. So I, I don't really have memories of, of that place, except from visiting later. Um, then we moved to Paris, uh, near, near, in the suburbs of Paris, and very quickly, when I was five, we moved to Belgium. Mm. So at a very early age, I, I was uh, a foreigner. Mm. And um, mm. Belgium looks like very, very close to, to France, and when you look at the map of Europe, it looks like the, the, the backyard. But truth is, just like Togo is different from Ghana, if you have uh, grown up in Togo, you have a completely different education, background and cultural than uh, if you had grown up in Ghana, even being a Ghanaian. Well, it was the same for me. I was French, but I grew up in Belgium. Belgium at that time was a bubbly center of the European construction. And that has very much marked my, my um, childhood. Um, so many people from all over Europe were gathering there and there were diplomatic uh, missions to uh, the, the new EU that were there. So I grew up in a very, very diverse environment, uh, yet very privileged. I always, I was, uh, I, I, I can give it to you. I, I knew it was a very privileged environment, yet I had an education where my parents um, didn't want us to take anything for granted. Mm. So, um, Good parents. Yeah, um, I only realized later. Um, <laughs> So I think growing up in a foreign environment, trying to blend and, uh, and understand the culture uh, at a very, very early age, learn another language, that was very helpful in the rest of my career in, in how I approach things um, and try to be, uh, when in Rome, do as the Romans, right. uh, still keeping my own personality and, and uh, I'm French mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to be different. But uh, I think it has helped me um, approach different cultures from very early age. I mean, that's wonderful. And I mean, I've read, and you can correct me if the information is wrong, that your father was a record a director of a, of a record label, right? Yep. So I'm guessing that's where your love for music comes from. Is that true? Um, I think that it's, it's more my, my education um, because my parents wanted us to do sports, to do music, so we had to learn um, piano or guitar and, and, and singing. Have and a holistic so, education. Yes, they wanted us to touch up on, on, on uh, everything. And your mother was a teacher. She was yeah. a teacher. But um, I think that my, my father's job more, gave me more of an insight that uh, music was an actual business. It was an actual industry. It was not just entertainment. It was not just something that people do and, uh, and uh, that it had a value that there were people working behind that uh, uh, and that a song is a product and to have a product you have someone who uh, invents it, someone who puts it together, creates it and then it involves many people to, to create that product. Mm -hmm. And so it's, my, my father's work was more uh, giving me a, a, this feel that it was an industry, it was a serious business, mm -hmm. it was not just something uh, entertaining. Right. There was something right. behind it. I mean, that, that's, that's very interesting because, and we'll come to this a little later, but fast forward, having you as the ambassador in Ghana, it shows why you attach so much importance to the cultural players, musicians, you know, what have you, and what they do. You, you treat them with a lot of respect and not just as entertainers. And no, I'm, I'm guessing that that's because they're you've had a long... Most yeah. of them, they're businessmen. They're running a company, they are running their brand, they, they are uh, working on promoting their products uh, as artists but what you don't see uh, is all the people behind the scenes yeah. and an artist all by itself can sometimes do a, a freestyle in, in front of a mic, <laughs> a mic but, but even that song, the, the, the beat, the lyrics, there are many people who have contributed to it and, and that's why yes I, I consider them as businessmen and therefore I have a lot of respect for them, I have a lot of respect for their talent which is absolutely mind-blowing and a lot of respect for how they export what they do. Mm. 
and what they do, they, they always, when you see them on stage um, overseas or everywhere in the world, they always promote Ghana. They say they're from Ghana, they call people to come in December in Ghana. They are, they are promoting the country and therefore I thought, oh, but somehow they are ambassadors of, of their yes. country, of their culture. And that is something that um, got us together. Common. Yeah, yes. I could relate to that. Yeah. So let's talk about, I mean, you had this interesting childhood where you're exposed to any and everything so that you could be a more well-rounded mm. person. But did you have siblings and from, you know, your household, how did that also in turn um, inform the, the, your choice of education, where you studied, where you went to school and all that? I, I, I think, well, I had two sisters, but we were about the same age really we were we were 14 months different and 14 months oh that's like triplets like like triplets <laughs> uh but we we were very different and i was a bit an outsider um i was curious i was i i, I like to learn i like to do i was a bit hyperactive also quite lonely i love to read i love to do puzzles i love to do these kind of stuff um and I was um, probably very mature at a very early age, so I liked the company of older people rather than my sisters who were younger and who liked to play dolls and yeah. things. So you're the eldest. I was the eldest, and I liked to organize things, you see. So if they wanted to play dolls, I wanted to organize the whole village, so here's the post office, <laughs> and, then, and that was not fun for them because all they wanted to do was feed the baby and put it to bed and say, no, we have to, you know. I was trying to structure something to, to, to make it meaningful, and they were quite bored. They were saying, no, we just want to play and just to, so I wanted to, yes, I was an organizer from a very early stage, and uh, I was a bit bossy as well. So when it came to studying, I think that I was very lucky. You know, when your, your mom is in the uh, teaching area, mm -hmm. she has a vision of the kind of options that you have Absolutely. after school. And that was very helpful. Um, in France, we have figures and statistics that show that um, children of, of uh, teachers usually succeed better because the language they hear at home the respect for the teachers the respect for school academic knowledge is is um, coherent with what they hear at home uh, and what they hear at school and um, and and they the, the parent can help them finding their way around in the academic uh, academic uh, uh, curriculum and so very quickly my mother said you need to do this you need to go into this uh, kind of area and they they I, I, I could learn languages quite easily, so they were they were pushing me to, to do something that would have to do with languages. So they wanted me to be an international lawyer or <laughs> to, to go into it. So I did a business school because they had done a business school and uh, they thought that is what will give you the most uh, options. If you have an MBA, you can really go to uh, almost everything. But I wanted to be a doctor, but, they, but, oh. but my level in, in physics and, and uh, <laughs> biology was not good enough because we had to learn. And I was not good at learning lessons, actually. I was good at doing, so I loved math. And more uh, of a hands-on kind yes, of student. I, I loved uh, French and literature because it was about writing and, and essays and everything creative. Um, I loved math because I loved when it was a complicated problem to de 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 detangle yeah, and you solve it and you find a solution. It's, <laughs> it's exciting. Uh, I loved languages because I could see the, the, the use of it. It would open doors to me and, and give me access to different people. But learning history, learning biology, learning all that, it just, you know, it was about learning, learning by heart. <laughs> like, mm. And that's not you. No, it's not really me. No, no, not really. Okay, so let's, let's move on from there. So I knew you went to some brilliant schools. Um, you're yeah. in Toulouse at a point. I was yes. in the Toulouse Business School. Um, at, at that time, you took a, a competition exam for all the business schools in, in France and then uh, you would um, have different scores in, in, in those different schools because they would give coefficients uh, de depending on the different subjects. And I, I was admitted in all of them and I chose to lose probably because it was the furthest from Paris. <laughs> you wanted an adventure. I wanted to be away <laughs> from my family. I wanted to, you know, take my independence with my parents' money. But. <laughs> Uh, but I wanted to well, have course. my own, uh, yeah. But I realized my children did that too. They, they were very independent with my money. And uh, so, you know, the, the, the life has a way of, of uh, backlashing at you up to a point. Um, 
and uh, I, I quite enjoyed those studies because there was a bit of law, there was a bit of accountancy, there was marketing, there was uh, communication, and um, there was this atmosphere of the class in a business school that was quite fun. And uh, but still, I, I I I had no idea what I wanted to do really. Mm. You know, I was very impressed by the people who were at school, age 20, and they already had a very mm. specific career path. I had just no idea. But could it have been because you were so multi-talented? And because well, I would love to already. think so. I would love to think so. I think or I was just very immature. Interests. I yeah. think I, I, I was very immature, uh, and I think that. Um, when you are 18 and you're choosing university or, or what kind of, uh, sec of, of uh, studies you're going to do, you are so immature. Yeah. You just don't know. And you have to make a choice that will sort of, you know, shape your, your whole your life. life. Yeah. And um, so I, I, I just didn't really choose. I chose something that would keep all the options <laughs> open. But that was smart. That was a rather mature. Yeah, that was. Yeah. No, I think that my parents pushed me to do that. Um, and actually, I really chose a path when I was 33. I went back to school to public public administration, and that's where yeah. I thought, oh, maybe that's more like what I want to do. Your Jesus year. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> so you're 33 is your Jesus year. So. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought I, I I I have worked 15 years in the private sector, and I thought that is very exciting. You do lots of things. You have a lot of freedom to do things as long as you bring turnover. As long as you bring money in, you, you can really do whatever you want. But the pressure of the turnover, the pressure of, of the uh, employees and, and, and not knowing if you would bring enough money to keep them and making people redundant, you know, in the, the private sector is cruel and, and the main goal of a, uh, of a private company is to survive. Absolutely. And um, so I thought maybe in the public service I could do something for my country, I could be useful, I could sort of uh, accompany the reforms that the French state was trying to uh, implement uh, to have more of a customer-oriented uh, serv public service, and um, and you don't have to struggle for money really. We, you are badly paid as a civil servant, but it's a consistent uh, the, pay. the means yes, it's consistent. But the means that you have to 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 work uh, and to do things, it's uh, you negotiate your budget and and it's public money, so you have to respect it and make sure that every penny is well used but you don't have to go and chase money. Mm. You, 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 and, that was, uh, and I was able to do things and to change lives, to touch lives and, and to do, uh, implement reforms, conceive and, and implement some reforms that have really changed the lives of some people in the army when I was uh, working with the Ministry of Defense. Um, and so, yeah, you can be committed to the cause of, of um, the, the, the taxpayers or the militaries when I was there or uh, the, the, the people you're working for, that, that makes it very meaningful. I mean, we, we knew already that you're a people person, but mm. hearing this allows us to understand that you're a servant of the people. Yes, yes, exactly. And I think that's such a beautiful thing. And we're going for a quick break. And when we come back, we'll continue to speak to Her Excellency and Sophie Ave and delve more into this servant of the people that she is and how that has come to bear in her time here in Ghana. We'll be right back. Welcome back and bienvenue if you're just joining us. It's a French day because, of course, we're spending time today with Her Excellency and sophie Ave, the Ambassador of France to Ghana. And look, we've been having a conversation and if you've missed it, you better make sure you catch the repeat of this show because you understand why at least from the very beginning of the conversation. She is who she is and she's done what she's done if you've been following her work while she's been in Ghana. But um, yeah, before I reintroduce Her Excellency, we're also going to meet some very interesting ladies. I just sprung the surprise on, on the ambassador because I know we've been talking about culture from the perspective of music and whatnot, but she's also, which a lot of people don't realize, I believe, very much immersed in culture and its totality. So we'll give her the chance to talk about what she and the embassy have been doing up north in Ghana with share butter and, you know, fair trade and giving women a chance to express themselves economically and have a roadmap sort of to financial independence. But, um, you know, we're, we're playing around with share butter and some of the things that Her Excellency likes. So Your Excellency, 
Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> well, I definitely brought you to France with that weather. Y yes, yes, you and did. It's chilly. You so, did. Uh, we can believe we are in France. <laughs> we it are. reminds me of my country, really. Yeah. But I hear there are lots of heat waves there at the moment. Yeah, we mm. have reversed the world. We thought yeah. that we would give you the, the, the you know, rainy weather and we would have the sun. Just for a short while. Just for a short while. <laughs> yes. So you definitely need moisture. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. lots of it. Lots, lots of, of it. it. So, ladies uh, and, uh, and viewers, let me introduce Nunya. She is the CEO of Nunya Naturals. We also have Essie Nam. Essie Nam is the CEO of Enam Cosmetics. Now, these are two ladies that I love, not just because they play around with some of my favorite essential oils and, and local butters, but also because they're industrious, they're women, and they're doing the kind of business that I believe Ghana needs to have, Africa needs to have. I mean, putting us just on the cusp of, we're talking about exportation, fixing all the problems we have with our balance of payments, if you're talking economics, and you know, giving us a chance really to strengthen our currency, the Ghana city, right? And I mean, we're not talking much about all the metrics, but I love them, and I believe Her Excellency will love them too. My Excellency, I mean, you and the French Embassy, you've been doing a lot of work in Ghana for years. I mean, we're here at Alliance Francaise, for example. This year, Alliance Francaise is celebrating 65 years of existence just alongside Ghana, 65 years of independence. How do you feel about that? That an entity that's been so great on the cultural landscape in Ghana, you're here for a milestone of 65 years. Yeah, actually it's even older than me. <laughs> um, Alliance Francaise is actually a Ghanaian association. All Alliance Francaise are local associations. So the board, they're all Ghanaians. And we subsidize uh, the um, alliances for um, them to display some French culture, French music, or francophone, not only French, mm -hmm. francophone. Um, they do also teaching uh, French and, and they prepare you for degrees and, and Delph and Delph and all sorts of things. Um, so they, they make money out of that business. But it is not part of the embassy. We are funding them uh, partly and in some big alliances like this one, uh, we are also uh, providing uh, uh, the director, who is a French uh, civil servant. But otherwise, they are very independent in what they want to do and how they, so I'm, I'm just a guest here, it's not <laughs> part of the embassy. But yes, we have done things in the area of she butter, so I've, I've, I've seen how ladies are doing uh, from the she nuts to she butter. Um, up in the north, and, and I would love to replicate that um, in, in many other places, mm. thanks to the AFD, which is the Agence Française de Développement, uh, another part of the French network. Um, there were these wonderful ladies up in the north and they were picking she nuts, right? And they were selling the she nuts. So what we helped them to do was first of all to store the she nuts, to, to dry them uh, so that, because you cannot actually process as soon as they were picked. Exactly. So there was a big storage and then we uh, funded the, the building of a factory that transformed the she nuts into she butter. But once you've done that, um, they, they need to sell the she butter to someone. So we have also organized the whole um, process so that they have customers, mm -hmm. which are French companies of cosmetics that are buying the raw she butter. So they, they work and they know that they will have uh, someone to sell it to. That's brilliant. So that is uh, something I was very proud of. And it's up in, in uh, it's in Murugu, which is uh, near Tamale, Damongo, that area. She knows Ghana. She knows Ghana. <laughs> but I mean, it, it's brilliant. And we, I, I know you love Shea Butter. And I do, I do. Apart from I the, do. the economics, the business of it, you love it as a product, you know? Yeah, well, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a very natural, uh, it's a very natural pr product. And we, we buy them, we buy it back in, in France at a very high price, by the way. Mm. So what I'm doing, I. I I'm sort of using a luxury product, you know, in France we, to, to buy she butter uh, because it's imported, we don't do it. And then it's, it's processed and it has nice smells and everything. So we use it for, to moisture the skin, but also when we go in the sun, uh, to, because it's also protective and it gives you a nice tan. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. like it. Okay, and you, you need a lot of it when you go back cause, uh, because of the heat wave and everything. Well, I, I, I suspect <laughs> that by the time I get there, the heat wave we'll be, will be done. We'll be done. Yeah. Well, let's hope so. Yes. Let's hope so. So, ladies, um, you're here. I'll start with you, Essina. 
that's maybe her excellency i mean she she can start her own business in france who knows you know right. or, or make some of these things in her kitchen so that she can save you know a little bit of her, of her money right. <laughs> and yeah. use it to invest in people like she likes to do right. so what do we have here i'll start with you asina okay so um we're going to be making sheer body butter mm -hmm. okay as well as a sheer pomade okay um so the pomade is a hot pour process we use uh, beeswax which okay. is a natural wax mm -hmm. to harden it so that when it's out in the sun it does not melt okay um, and then we also have another process where we whip the shea butter and then we add oils to make it softer we add essential oils or fragrances to give it a nice um, yeah. smell. All right, I must so. add that they're both cosmetic sciences. All right. So, you know, you hear a lot of well, your uh, favorite of science in there. <laughs> of course. Of okay, course. so where do we start? Asima? So where do you start? Yeah. So I'm going to start so with the hot pour process. Okay. Yes. Um, so you're melting things, right? Yes, I'm melting things. That. So we can use any metal container in our house. Right. A saucepan will do. So that's the saucepan that yeah, you find, um, you can buy that everywhere, right? Yes, that's raw shea butter All from right. the north of okay. Ghana. Mmm, smells good. Yeah. So we have our shea butter. Okay. So can people buy that from you, the raw shea butter? So we actually buy it from a supplier from, right. the, north from the north okay. of Ghana. Okay, so guys go to the north. Yes. Okay. Get some raw one. Alrighty. So this is the shea butter. Oh, that smells good. Mm -hmm. What's that oil? This is coconut oil. Okay. okay, let me just check. That's also good for the skin. Yeah, coconut it oil. is brilliant for the hair too. I think my, my, my left hand will be much better than my right hand. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And then this is one of my favorite ingredients, cocoa butter. Oh, I that, love it, smells like, it smells yeah. like chocolate. It smells like cocoa. chocolate. Oh. Love it. Chocolate. So when we add it, I have some of these because we have a French company that is processing cocoa and they brought me different stages of cocoa, including mm, the, uh, the butter. butter. Yeah, so I have some. So it's been smelling like chocolate in my cupboard oh. for a moment. You have a lot of goodies to take back home. Then we're yeah. going yeah. to yeah. Believe you me, yes. add the beeswax, which is the hardener, okay. the thickener. Yes. And just put this. So you mix all that? Yes. So we mix all that okay. until it's melted and then we pour it, um, allow it to cool down. And right. once it cools, it becomes like a hard pomade type mm -hmm. of product, okay. yes. Next, so while we are allowing this to melt, we'll do a simple body butter mix. Okay, so I'm guessing this is going to be more of a lotion. Um, so this is still uh, butters. Still butters. Yes, okay. butters, That's oils, okay. essential oils, okay. yeah. But what? So the, that's still the raw uh, thing. Yes. And then what are you going to add to so it? So this is the raw shea butter. I'm going to add a bit of coconut oil to make okay. it softer, and then I'm going to add some essential oils to give it a nice, nice okay. smell. Yes. Okay. So what the whipping does is it uh, makes it more fluffy mm -hmm. and buttery and light. Mm -hmm. so it's like okay. a whipped butter. Do that first. You don't add the oil first. No. You you start whipping it. Oh. Okay. And that's when you put the eye. Yes. No, right now. Right. So you add okay, the. So I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. okay. If I really add see. it, Hexas is very hands on. A little bit you know? at a time. So I do a bit, a bit, and then I, I mix. Right. Okay. And then and I can add, add some more. The these wax takes the longest to melt. Right. All of it? Yes, please. You're having fun with that. <laughs> well, I know. Mm -hmm. Reminds me when I was uh, a kid playing, doing uh, cakes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so the rosemary? Yes. So I'm going to add rosemary and lavender. Okay, rosemary and lavender. It's already mixed. Yes, this is a mix of. So. Okay. Mm. so it's just a little, it smells good, right? 
Yeah. You don't need to put too much. Too much but I can smell it. Mmm, smells good. That you can smell it. Okay? Yeah. How long? Is that this okay? is yeah, this is good. There we go. It looks like you could so eat it. It looks it does. <laughs> Okay. This is yummy. good. Okay. Yummy, yummy. Our hot milk is almost oh, done as done. well. Right. Okay. Yes. This is just a tiny little Big. piece of the oh. beeswax in there. Okay. Well, that smells good. Mm. Yeah. It will it's last beautiful. all day. Oh, it better smell Gorgeous. good then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you have a hot mm. day, this is a good butter to use. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. <laughs> Relaxing as well. Is that anti wrinkle? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, so now we need to leave this to cool. Cool, right. Okay. So we'll leave this to cool. So let and me then move it out of the way so that none of us gets burnt. Best. Okay. I'll just put it, you know, take it over. So let me see what it looks like. So oh, it looks like so oil. It's oh, right. Cool okay. Oil. So it's all melted. Okay. So let me actually it's... take it away so that. Okay. Yeah. I can right. just... I've got it. It's not hot. Yeah. Okay. 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 So. Essinam is, you know, while we're waiting for the the butter melt to cool, you know, you're, you're packaging this. Right. <laughs> okay. So let's move on to Nunya. Nunya, okay. what are we making? So we're going to make a simple hair butter. Okay, mm -hmm. hair butter. Using oh, so your hair is going to be fabulous too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sure typically your hair type is very soft. Yeah, I'm messy. <laughs> <laughs> So we still need some moisture. Yeah. Okay. What but do you then, typically use for your hair? A shampoo. 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 <laughs> and most shampoos have oils in them. Yes. Or what do you do to your hair? To I make have it? no idea. <laughs> so I you're going to no give idea. you the real stuff. Here. I just you know, get in and out of the shower, yeah. do my shampoo, dry my hair as much as I can. And I don't, I'm not very good at, you know, Oiling taking it. care of... of uh, of your hair. Yeah, no. mm -hmm. okay, so, uh, I have a hairdresser to do that. Uh, well, and then I don't want to know what he's doing. <laughs> so Nunya has some stuff for us. Yes. You can carry it along in you know, a little and basket. Try it. it. Yeah. And to the hairdressers as well. Okay, I'm going to tell him. <laughs> okay, so Ooh. shea butter is in cloves. there. Ooh. Yes. So what's that mixture? We can see cloves. And then the rosemary oil. Okay. Oh, so. mm. Mm. Oh, I can smell. Rosemary. Okay. Yes. So it's been infused for days. So things you use in your kitchen as well. Cloves are in there. Mm -hmm. uh, dried rosemary is in there. Mm -hmm. okay. So actually and you coconut do cosmetics oil. with things in your kitchen, right? Mm. Yeah, they're natural. Well, those are the best, right? Whatever you put inside your body is good for outside your body yes. as well. I, I, I use a lot of olive oil. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I did inside out. So you're actually making it soft by adding the oils. Okay. Okay, so we're not putting any of the cloves in there. No, no, no we're not. Just the oil. <laughs> Just the oil. Just the oil. That. Okay. Can I take off one yeah, okay. of this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. It's oily. Oops. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Which side do you prefer? Oh, any. Just yeah. one. Okay. okay. Just want one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, God. One do you want to take out the um, leftover of? Yeah, cream. Yeah. If you can scoop it's it off. Same. Okay. The same. So, so okay. Can help us. So, so what is this? Add uh, moringa. No. Moringa. Oh, moringa. Yeah. Okay. All Give right. Give it uh, the nutritional benefits. So, what does moringa do for the hair? It's fabulous for hair growth. Okay. Yes. Volume so as well. I'm guessing. Volume as well. Okay. So this is. What about the rosemary and the cloves? Rosemary anti-itch, anti-dandruff, and then I'll add a little bit of tea tree One oil. of my favorites. <laughs> what does it smell like? The tea tree. Yeah. It's minty. Mmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, woo. You love it's it. Good for, it, good for the, it if is. you have a flu. Exactly. <laughs> can I just drop? Just know, one drop there. Just one drop in. <laughs> Here's the nose. <laughs> 
And it's good for, if you have problems with acne, spots, mm -hmm. you break out easily, well, tea tree I is brilliant. Tea tree is yeah. I tend really to have that because I have really oily skin. And I have to do a lot of makeup. Because well, I have a dry skin, which is much help. Yeah. Yeah. That's help. I, 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 At least envy I didn't you. have to that. Well, I envy you. But this, the, the, you know, the, the weather in Ghana, humidity makes your skin like. Well, that's true. Very that's supple. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I'm taking advantage of this and just making myself smell good. Mm -hmm. Of course. Okay. And the All weather right. too is so good. Set. So, what we can do right? is to. Just just probably give us have a mix. to. Go closer. Get closer. Yes. Okay. Okay. I pray this is wider enough. Right. I wish we could Are you use okay? that. Okay. Is it yeah, a harder? You're left handed. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> you want to try? Well, yeah. I can try. Yep. Okay. So I went this way, so. Thing, yeah? Good. And I have to go this way. Yeah. Okay, then it's clockwise or anti clockwise. <laughs> that is serious business. Yes. 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 I'm confusing it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I think it's fluffy enough. Is it okay? Good. Oh. Great. Bravo! Oh, well, that's not that much. I mean, there's not so much on the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you picked up clockwise or anti-clockwise. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's that's also. Uh, <laughs> okay, so still in. so it's ready. So it's so ready. Oh, so it's so so ready. Oh, is it? Oh my! So oh, wow. we can add more fragrances. <laughs> or okay, I see oil. some cinnamon. Yes, this is cinnamon oil. Uh, yeah, I I have an addiction to cinnamon. I love it. Yeah. I love the smell of it. It's wonderful. You know the carrot cake we add yes. cinnamon, so that. I love Ooh. the cinnamon rolls. To be so yes. I yeah. love cinnamon. <laughs> Ooh. It's an interesting mix. So what did you mix yeah. it with? Cinnamon. So that, cinnamon like, and cinnamon. Some rosemary. Just cinnamon. There. Oh, coconut. Yeah, yes. that's it. Yeah. And I see some rosemary there too. That's not, too. That's not raw oh. cinnamon. Mint. Yeah. Peppermint oil. And peppermint oil. <coughs> oh, that's yeah. okay. What's, there's a lot yeah. of things in there. I see that. Yeah. It's like a magic elixir. So, so now, what does on, it smell mm -hmm. like? Uh, what, what, what do I have left? So this is for the hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you can add okay. a little. I can't miss so. blend it. Oh, it's very fluffy. Very. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to guess all this so in my hair. So the difference in the raw share and then this. Uh-huh. Okay. So this is the outcome of our hair butter. All right. So, and so what do you do? You then apply it on the hair? On the hair, if okay. your hair is dry. Oh, on dry so hair. Actually, so my hair right now. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, thank you, ladies. Thank so you, we're going yeah. to package this right now. I mean, yeah. hopefully, oh, yes, see yes. your products in France one of these days. You can go yes. visit your excellency. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And take the products yeah. to France, yes. indeed. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we're going to package this all up and then okay. give it to her. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's go for a break. When we come back, we'll just be winding down this conversation with Her Excellency and Sophie Ave, our, our wonderful ambassador of France to Ghana, who's leaving us, unfortunately. But we have so many great memories of her. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Of course, it's Diplomatic License here on City TV. My name is Apioko, and we're just wrapping up our conversation. Sadly, also our time of having Her Excellency and Sophie Abe here in Ghana. Uh, so not just here on Diplomatic License, but in general here in Ghana. We're having to say goodbye to her very soon. So we're just wrapping up this conversation. Your Excellency, now, I mean, we spoke a lot about your, your, your younger years and your journey throughout life. But how did you get into diplomacy? You did business administration, you did everything, but you didn't study diplomacy. Um, I, I did because when I was uh, when I went back to school to study uh, public administration, I um, did. I was seconded to the foreign affairs, uh, the foreign um, yeah, the foreign affairs in, in uh, um, the UK. Okay. Um, oh, in the UK. In the UK. So oh. I, I learned the UK diplomacy, uh, and then I was also for six months in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in France. And then when I chose the Ministry of Transport, my first posting was to be in charge of European and international affairs for the Ministry of Transport. Uh, it was about negotiating in the international organization, in the EU, all the regulations related to transport. So um, I've always been uh, more or less 
into this when I was with uh, the, the ship owners uh, heading the shipping industry. Um, again, it was about international regulations. Shipping is basically international. And I had like maybe uh, um, in brackets those six years in the Ministry of Defense when I did human resources and social. But um, I've always been uh, interested in, in, into uh, international business. So obviously this has caught me back. Um, and um, when I was in the Ministry of Defense running my 300,000 people and uh, they called me and say, how about being an ambassador? Mm -hmm. you know? I'm, I'm just a high-ranking civil servant uh, who can actually um, operate in any ministry and uh, that's the beauty of the thing. I can More of a utility player, you can put yes, anywhere. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly, utility player, yeah. that's right. That's, that's brilliant. A footballistic, <laughs> yes. that is right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's brilliant. Absolutely. So, uh, but how did you end up in Ghana? Was Ghana your first ambassadorial yes. posting? How did that come about? Uh, when they approached me, when the Ministry of Foreign Affairs approached me to offer me an ambassadorial posting, it was about it was in Ghana. So they said, "How about being an ambassador to Ghana?" So um, I, I so there was it was um, a, a package. You see, it was not being an ambassador and then where would you like to go? It was uh, we we need someone in Ghana who is going to change the way we do diplomacy. We want to. Um, you know, bring this country closer to us because uh, they are a key country in West Africa. Um, we, we have some uh, economic links, therefore we need to do economic diplomacy, support our companies, help investments come in. And uh, we need to do this uh, new partnership, uh, people to people. And we thought that Ghana was a, a good experiment uh, area because uh, the president had, had just come out with the uh, Ghana Beyond Aid and, right. and so we thought, okay, let's see how we can actually cooperate uh, beyond this uh, development aid and uh, through uh, investments, through supporting SMEs, uh, through, of course, carrying on um, helping with the uh, francophone and, um, you know, teaching French. But we, it was, I think, an experiment where President Macron in 2017 said in the Ouagadougou speech he wanted to change the way we do diplomacy. And so choosing someone who didn't have a, a background um, as a diplomat in the French service, I didn't have any reference. So uh, when people say what I did was unconventional or was different, I don't know different from what yeah. because I, I had never been. You're just being yourself. I really. was just doing what the assignment was: mm -hmm. make France known, make France understood, uh, create more links between France and, and, and Ghana, um, attract uh, French investments, uh, value Ghanaian SMEs, uh, identify areas of strength in Ghana where you can actually support and and and. Uh, and, and that's, you know, I just looked at the assignment. I didn't, uh, I wasn't framed into, um, so I have to do this, but then I have to do it that way. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know what the, that way was. Yeah. So I just did it how I felt was the most efficient. And, um, and that's, how, that's how it went. Yeah. So you came in in 2018. Yes, September. Um, I, I'm sure, like you said earlier, you had just about a year, gave yourself a year really yeah. to assimilate, observe. observe, understand the terrain. And then just on the back of that one year, COVID hits. Yes. What was that like for you? Well, we, my team has been amazing because we were all stuck in the office, each locked in our individual offices. Those who were sharing an office, they were working in shifts. We were, were making sure that people wouldn't, you know, get in, in, in contact with each other so that if one of us was diagnosed with the thing, we were sure that we were not a contact case. Yeah. And so there was a, a huge, it was logistically complicated, but we all thought that it was our duty to be here. It was our duty to be there to support the French community. Some of them wanted to go back to France, some of them wanted to stay and most of them wanted to stay and we needed to be there for them and then we needed to be there to support the, the Ghanaian efforts to uh, tackle the, the whole COVID situation. So you didn't repatriate, you were here throughout the period. Oh, I was yeah, there all, a, all along, yes, yeah. with my team. Um, we, we, you know, you never know what can happen. When it started, we had no idea where it was heading to. We all thought when it started in March that by summer it would be done and, uh, and no, it wasn't. And um, so we, we knew that Ghana would need uh, some PCR tests in emergency. Then we, we had to convey information about the access to vaccines because the President Macron was really committed to make sure that Africa was getting its fair share. So it was also 
creating a link. And then, of course, Ghana was the first uh, yes. African country to get uh, together. Yes, and that, and, was, and uh, and that was, was so brilliant. proud. That was brilliant. That, that was, was brilliant. brilliant. So then, COVID sort of, or we found our feet with COVID. COVID found its feet, depending on how you're looking at it. And then November 2021, you're doing Paris and Accra. Yeah. By April, you're reciprocating and you're doing Accra, Accra and Paris. Paris. And this is a massive thing and mm -hmm. everybody's talking about it. And it's in your one year, that's actually an extra year. That was my experience. Because yeah. you should have left in I 2021. Yeah, I should have been gone, yes. What was that like? Um, <laughs> I actually, you know, it built up slowly um, when I had the opportunity to, to, to meet those French artists who came to Ghana, uh, had met Volare in France, who had sold them Ghana. I said, come to Ghana, do your music videos. And they, when, when they were there, Volare and I, we said, but why don't you do featurings? Then we put them in contact with, with Ghanaian artists. But it, were, it was still the middle of COVID. So shipping them to France to record in the studio or for them to come here to record here in some studios. That was quite hard, yeah. but we supported safe that. at the time. Not so much, we yeah. had to, it was it was quite a nightmare. We had well, Who are some of these um, Ghanaian artists that we were linking with? So the we, we, they linked with um, um, Kwabna Kwabna to begin with, Gasmila and Fameye, and then they connected with Stoneboy, Sarkodie, Becca, and after uh, the concerts, some other artists got in touch, so uh, Passy did a featuring with Aquaboa. Okay. And so I'm, I'm sure that opened the path for many other French artists to, it has drawn attention onto Ghanaian artists from the French managers or labels. And so there, I, I'm, I'm hoping there will be more and more connections because that's also a way of, of conveying the French language. Um, a few words of French that, that the people Most are definitely. listening and, uh, and making the, the French artists known uh, also in Ghana. We have so many amazing artists in France. Many of them are from the African diaspora. They are French, they are fully French, they sing in French, they're more French than I am, but <laughs> they, are, they, are, um, they have proud roots in Africa. And uh, so it's, it's usually easier for um, the Ghanaians and African uh, singers to relate to those uh, French African. African. They are 100% French, they were born yeah. in France. A but lot of them don't even know their, they, their African they, spaces. Sometimes no? they try to yeah. return and, and find their roots, but, but some are second or third generation. They've been in France for, their parents were born in France, so they are very French. If you look at the French team, yeah, they keep Fr the French France, football, football uh, they, team. They were, most of them were know, born in France. And, and everybody they are French. cracked jokes that, you know, Africa won the World Cup. <laughs> well, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's possible, but they, were, they are actually French. Yeah. Uh, they were born in France, most yeah. of them. But they are proudly French and the proud of their African roots. Of so you, you can actually be both. Yeah. Uh, like, you can be French and be proud of being from Corsica or from Brittany. Uh, it's erasing your, your regional origin. Uh, it's, 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 it's part of your culture. So we are, we are proud of them because they are French, but we're also proud because they are carrying uh, with them the, a, a, a past, a story, a background, a culture that is making our country a melting pot and, and a more diverse and interesting country. You know, if we didn't have these people, immigrants from first, second, third generation, we wouldn't have the, 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 the richness of our gastronomy. That's true. Most of which has inspirations from all over. Absolutely. Their richness right of our down music. Right the spices and the ingredients. Of course, of course. Yeah. And that we, we love pizzas, but pizzas is Italian, right? And pastas. But we, we had loads of, of Italian immigrants and Portuguese immigrants, then uh, African, North African, we love couscous, we love paella, we love uh, Spanish immigrants, and, and they come with their, their culture and, and, and part of gastronomy and music and traditions, and, and France is, is doing a whole big melting pot of that. And this is something we have in common with Ghana, because you've had visitors um, in a different kind of relations. Some came to trade, some came to colonize, but you've managed to keep That's true. from them uh, different things, expressions, uh, the language, and a bit of your gastronomy, a bit of, uh, the, of your administration, of your traditions. And that's what makes a country a country. I mean, no country can remain as it was uh, in the ancient times. We're all moving forward, and you're not losing your soul because you are enriching it and making it 
uh, better. It's like you're not losing your language just because you speak several. Exactly. So at this point, Your Excellency, we have some gifts for you. Oh, so do the you? ladies, yeah, so the oh, ladies okay. have... So that's the one I have for you then. Oh, well, I love There you go. You. It smells so Thank good. You. I found it here. And then it smells wonderful. And I could pretend yeah, I bought I, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but no. But while we wait for them to come over, you're leaving. Yeah, okay. stop reminding me. You're going to make me emotional. I, I, I want you to be emotional. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm but, not because I still have how, a few how days. How are you feeling? Awful. I mean, because I, I know uh, the immediate past ambassador of Switzerland to Ghana, His Excellency, Phil, His Excellency Philip Stalder, he says it sucks to be friends with diplomats because they're always leaving We're and coming. Leaving. Yeah. How are you feeling? Terrible. I'm feeling oh. terrible. It's, it's the saddest thing I've had to do. Um, I feel I'm leaving friends. I'm leaving uh, a the second food. homeland. I'm leaving the food. I'm yeah. leaving. <laughs> I'm leaving the smile, What's the free favorite, smile. The uh, I would say mm -hmm. Kalewule. Oh. I mean, I'm, I'm very much into Kalewule. Oh, but I will. But that's the reason why I, I have a house here. So I will. I will keep coming back as sure. a as a resident, as a as a normal uh, uh, private. Um, and I. I put together a foundation which is uh, the, the Akosia Fund Absolutely. that is linked to an NGO so they are actually handling it while I'm, I'm not there and making sure that every penny is used for the right purpose. So that will give me opportunity to stay in touch, to carry on doing, impacting uh, some communities. And you're, you're a queen mother in three different places. Yes. Oh, a development queen mother. Yes. It's it's not so really it's a Hima, yes. you know, Hima, yes. right? in different places, <laughs> three different places. Wow. Yes, you but know. also in uh, in in, in uh, Bolgatanga. Yeah. So it's uh, Napoka uh, uh, Amaltinga, which means basically and Kosohema, yeah. and then in uh, in Osu. Yeah. Uh, so I think that was the most recent. That's the most recent. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but, but that's that's an amazing way it. of uh, of of. Of recognizing and being grateful. In France, we don't have chieftaincies, so what we do is we give uh, some uh, medals. So I was very lucky to uh, decorate two Ghanaians uh, with the second highest uh, honor in France, which is the Order of Merit. And um, we we have many ways of doing of making someone a a uh, what do you call it, honorary citizen of mm. a country or of a of a city or so we have many ways of honoring right. the uh, foreigners diplomats but also business people who are, are uh, doing well in France uh, but we don't have chieftaincy so we cannot install anyone mm -hmm. but we have many different ways and and we do and I personally did for for two amazing Ghanaians both of which have been president to the Alliance Francaise. Ah, Both I like that. Yes, yes, the past and, and the current. Oh. And for what they have done to, to make France shine here in Ghana, uh, they, they deserve to have the National Order of Merit, which mm. is something that we French also have. You know, it's not something dedicated for foreigners. It's, it's, a, it's an order that is many French are struggling to get. Yeah, yeah I can imagine. And two Ghanaians have got it. And two Ghanaians have uh, got have got it. That but is, they have done amazingly well. That is it makes me That's proud nice. to hear that. It makes me proud to hear that. Mm -hmm. Now we have some gifts for you. Um, yes. So oh, wow. who wants so to that's go first? The, yeah, that's the thing yes. we've done. Yeah. Um, so these are products from Nunya yes. Natural right. and yes. Enam Cosmetics. Oh, thank you. Um, okay. Using so our natural. But is that the ones we've made? Oh, no. So these Those are the ones, ones that we so these made. Oh, Nunya has got. Made. So this is a shampoo. Yeah. Since okay. you love shampoo, now yeah. you have one. I'm going to try that you know, one. There's some Alata Samana in there as well. Yeah. The, the black and soap. Honey, honey oh, black in there I too. Love, I love black Yeah, so that's for you. There's an oil here too. Nunya, what does the oil do? We have the oil. The oil oil. The grass oil. What does the oil do? The oil oil. Yeah, yeah. Oil oil. Yeah. Well, you can put it on on your hair. Right. Oh, lovely. This is going to smell similar. So when she's done her wash in the shower. It's not going to attract the mosquitoes because I know they like sweetness. And then this is from Enam. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Hair butter. Oh, hair as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a body lotion. All right. Mm -hmm. Shea butter and coconut oil Thank you. in a lotion form. We have some oh, lip I love balms. These. I love these. Yeah. 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 And then these. we Thank have you. something else. Why am I so else? spoiled? You are. You, you have to I'm be. I'm so spoiled. Now, this Look is from myself and, and Team Diplomatic License. Mm -hmm. So our friend oh. Kole Kwa, she does these. Oh. And, and I know you're also very big on sustainability. Oh, yes. So another woman-owned company, recycled glass, so you could have a beer bottle oh, so in there. Glass. Exactly. Oh, Reprocessed, even have old beads that have been melted in oh, there. Wow. And we tried Let to do red, white, and blue for France. Of course. Uh, it comes right. with a bracelet. 
course, always. Oh, and this then is you've beautiful. Got your you. earrings. Well. Hey! Oh, thank you so <laughs> much. Hey! hey. That is that hey. beautiful. Got, yes, I've got my hair. What, what have I got? So beads fit for a queen. Oh, yeah, of course. Yes. Well, I've got to wear that this afternoon. I have mm -hmm. to. Obviously. So these are all yours. Thank Just to you say so thank much. you for speaking you to so us. Much. I know you're, you've been packing, and I must say, I Her Excellency has been most gracious because she's in the middle of packing up. She's leaving in just a few days, but she says, you know what, I'm going to do this interview. And for thank us, you. that means a lot. But also on behalf of all Ghanaians who have come to know and love you near and from afar, thank you so much for thank being you. you, for changing the face of diplomacy. You understood the assignment. I did. You owned it, and you delivered. Thank you. And yeah, Darcy, um, Oyura Dong. You know, since you're now from Osu, the Osu side, oh, you're a dong. And Akbe, Akbe, sisters. Okay. Thank you, Medashi. Thank you so Thank much. You. Do you have any final words? Oh, I can only say how <laughs> grateful I am. Thank you so much. I am spoiled. I had a fantastic time with you. Um, I don't know which one to look at. You, okay. Um, so th I want to thank the Ghanaians here. All of them, everyone, those I have the pleasure to meet in person and those who have been supporting me from afar, they have been just amazing, they have been supportive, kind and, and uh, if you look at the um, very beautiful um, video that TV3 has done, the little documentary in the news, uh, that's exactly what I told the President. Um, you, Ghana has a, a resource that is more precious than gold yeah. and that it's its people. Mm -hmm. So um, keep being as you are, all of you, uh, keep this amazing uh, gift of love that you carry and um, this is, uh, stay, stick together, uh, you're going to all thrive together and I'm sure that Ghana is moving forward. Sometimes you feel that it's mm. not going Amen fast that. enough mm -hmm. but it is moving forward because the future is the youth and the youth is what Ghana has. Mm. So thank you so much, Medase, Medamoase, a million for Merci your beaucoup. welcome. Merci infiniment. Merci Thanks for having me for these four years and thank you in advance for having me because I will keep coming back. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Merci infiniment. Grâce à Dieu and traveling mercies as you go and we'll visit you in France of as course. well, you know, and whenever you come back, you have a home here. Thank you. Thank you, so thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. So ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. And for now, Diplomatic License is with you. <laughs> and just like that, We've come to the end of another exhilarating episode of Diplomatic License, of course, right here on City TV. It's been an amazing, fun, enlightening conversation, I must say, with Her Excellency Anne-Sophie Ave, Ambassador of France to Ghana, outgoing ambassador, that is. This has been one of her very last media engagements, and we're very privileged and happy and humbled to know that it happened right here on Diplomatic License. I do hope that you learned a lot how the story of a single mother of three, you know, who found herself in the public service as a civil servant in France, was charged to come to Ghana through her work there and change the face of diplomacy. And again, it's been a privilege to have Ghana as the hub for that experiment that His Excellency President Macron of France himself decided to do. And uh, he couldn't have chosen a better person. So if you were wondering up until now why she did things the way she did as an ambassador, how she did them, what inspired them, she told you the secrets today. She really was just being herself. She understood the assignment that she was given. And in all of that, she maintained who she is and she delivered. And I believe that her efforts here, of course, have brought Ghana and France a little closer together, have strengthened the ties between our two countries that, of course, existed long before even she, Her Excellency Ave, was born. But look, stay tuned to City TV. So much more to come. Um, many thanks to our friends who came through the show today. Nunia Naturals, we had Enam's Cosmetics as well. Again, a very big thank you to Kolekwa who gave us the bead set, the necklace, the bracelet, the earrings for Her Excellency. Um, thank you as well to Note Cosmetics who sponsors our makeup here on City TV. And on Another big thank you to Nalam Clothing for the dress that I'm wearing here on the show today. This has been Diplomatic License. Love you all. Bye. <laughs>